Welcome to the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, your guide to motorsport sponsorship. Here's your host, Josh Weesey. Welcome to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Four Wheel Parts. I am excited to bring you this show today. I recently had someone reach out to me and say, look, I don't know if I'm getting really a good deal with this sponsorship proposal that I've got. I, I don't know if it's right for me or not. What do you think? And I get a lot of these, honestly. And this one, though, kind of stuck out. I was like, I haven't really talked about that in the show. Um, so what I want to discuss today is the art of saying no. It is not always very clear if a sponsorship deal that you've been offered is the right thing to do. Um, it depends on your short-term goals, your long-term goals, alignment, all this stuff. And that's what we're going to unpack in this episode today. I'm calling it the art of saying no. I'm focusing on if you do want to say no to a proposal, that that's okay. Um, I do dive into reasons why and how to do that. But that's what we're going to talk about in this episode today. So stay tuned. But there's a few other things I want to cover with you before I get into that. First is four-wheel parts and overlanding. Now, I've had a few people on the show that are overlanders in the past, and it's something that I'm personally pretty interested in. Another way of saying the word overlanding is car camping. Either way, it's a big deal right now. It's pretty hot, and it's pretty fun. And I want to tell you about what four-wheel parts can offer. So they've got quite a bit in the overlanding world, actually. You can get a bed rack or a roof rack to put a rooftop tent on. Um, you can get the rooftop tents through four wheel parts. You know, they make some tents cause they own Smittybilt brand. So there's some pretty affordable rooftop tents through Smittybilt on here. And also they get really good ratings and reviews. Um, there's a bunch of stuff through ARB. You can get the full camping trailers as well. So if you don't want to put a rack on your vehicle, you can get a, like an off-road focused camping trailer and then luggage and other tents and camping gear and stuff. So head over to four wheel parts. You can uh, just search overland and it'll take you right to a page where you can go to different things like the camping trailers, the backpacks and storage bags, camping gear, tents and awnings, all that stuff. Um, really good stuff. So I wanted to let you know about that. And they are running a special deal right now where you can get up to 12 months um, financing. Uh, I think it's a purchase of over $199. Uh, you can get that. So pretty cool stuff. All right. I want to tell you a little bit more about the other sponsors that make this show possible. Amsoil, they provide amazing lubrication products, and they're a company that runs on freedom. You can find out more at amsoil.com slash rider. Solderweld, they produce game-changing metal bonding technology, and they're ready to rescue your race. TopToPodium.com, they're experts in motorsports sponsorship and website creation. They can also do your race resume, so hit them up for that. Bold Racing, their family desert UTV race team. And then Crash Act Industries, they provide human protection and extreme racing products. I also want to shout out some of our other partners, MBRP, HMK USA, Sudboy Traction, and High Octane Coffee. And just in a minute, we'll get to some more about High Octane Coffee, but I do want to put a little plug out there. If you would be so kind as to head over to Apple Podcast and leave a rating and review, that would be great. So we've recently had a spike in ratings and reviews, which is awesome. I love it. Uh, I would love to get a lot more, though. So head over there, uh, leave that rating and review. And if you don't know how to do it, just reach out to me, josh at sponsoredriderclubpodcast.com or DM me on any of the the big sites there. I, I'm pretty active on um, Instagram and Facebook, so hit me up there. And, yeah, the last thing I'm going to put out there is please subscribe. doesn't matter what podcast player you use. Hit subscribe. And then you'll get the show automatically downloaded to your phone every week. So that's it. All right, now I'm going to get into the high octane coffee marketing tune up with Joe Sylvester, and then we'll hop into the show. What's up, guys? Joe Sylvester here with your high octane coffee marketing tune up of the day. Today, I want to talk about being omnipresent. Omnipresent means being in more than one place. Don't focus on just building your Instagram or just building your YouTube or just building your Facebook or solely relying on just the sponsors or just the stickers on the side of your car to 
and expect that that is going to deliver value and return on investment for sponsors. Make yourself present in your local community. Make yourself present at the race car uh, tracks, um, car shows, even you know hot rod shows. Offer to bring your race car out, put it on display, shake hands, kiss babies, give out autograph cards. Uh, any kind of charity work with uh, children's hospitals, uh, maybe more animal hospitals are your thing, animal rescues. Um, maybe make it some appearances at local schools. Little kids love race cars. Use that to your advantage. Make a positive impact on your community. Also, trade shows, things like PRI, SEMA. These are all things that are very important for you in building your brand and being, like I said, omnipresent. Make sure that when you're making that phone call, you're sending that email, that sponsor has already met you. That person has already come in contact with you face to face and you're going to be a step up on the game. All right, now it's time to get right into this episode, The Art of Saying No. And like I said in the intro, it's not always easy to detect if the sponsorship proposal or offer that you've gotten is a good thing. You know, maybe it doesn't make sense to go forward with the deal. Maybe you need to say no. And that could feel really wrong for a number of reasons. You know, if this is your first ever sponsor, Ah, you're definitely going to feel uncomfortable saying no or even telling if it's the right thing or the wrong thing to do. So that's what we're going to talk about, though. Um, I really want to start, though, by <laughs> completely contradicting everything I've said. You know, the art of saying no, I think part of it means that the, <laughs> there might be an opportunity still to say yes. Okay, I, so I want to just quickly uncover why you might say yes. Okay, <laughs> you can say no. But obviously you can say yes. So why might you say yes? Short term, you know, maybe a deal when you're reading it doesn't make sense to you. Um, maybe it doesn't benefit you very much. I know that's crazy, but not all sponsored deals benefit the rider or racer right off the gate. So if you have the long term strategy in mind here, you might want to say yes, even though the short term outcome doesn't look that beneficial for you. But we're playing a long game here. Maybe year two, year three, year five is what you're targeting. In that case, forget about the short term. Forget about year one. You're playing now for the long game. Okay. So if you have a sponsor that's reached out to you and made a deal proposal, maybe put a contract in front of you and you're uncertain if you feel that this person, this company, this group is a good long-term fit, then look, saying yes might be the right thing to do. No matter what in the show, I'm not going to tell you to say yes or say no. I'm just trying to give you the the mindset, uh, the lens to look through these deals with so that you can make the right decision for you. But I just really felt like before I talk about a whole episode of saying no to a deal, <laughs> I want to make sure that you understood though that saying yes to something that's not great in the short term might still be a longer term benefit. So that just further complicates everything I'm going to say right now, but I think it's truly important that you understand, you know, both sides of this thing. So that's really all I want to hit on for the piece of saying yes. And then I'm going to take a minute right now to thank the sponsors for this podcast. And then I'm going to come back in and dive into the reasons why you might say no and then the strategies or the tactics of how to actually say no. Let's talk about your truck for a minute. You can count on it to haul your vehicle and your gear to the track or to the trailhead, but I bet you never think about the motor oil. Here's why you should. Your oil is the only thing preventing your engine from wearing out and breaking down. To keep your truck running strong, look for an oil with added wear protection. Like, for example, Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil. It delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than is required by the leading industry standard. It provides the next level protection today's demanding engines need to keep running for years and to keep effortlessly towing your ride to the track. Go to amsoil.com slash rider to find out more. Make the switch to Amsoil Synthetic Motor Oil today to keep your vehicle running great. When I stop to think about 
all the things that make motorsports awesome. I think of camaraderie. I think of speed. I think of friendship. And I also think of family. And it's hard to go through all of those elements without thinking of bold racing. Now, bold racing and Jimmy Moore, the owner, has been a long-time supporter of this show and Impact Fuel overall. Jimmy Moore is a desert racer that also has a ton of experience with suspension, UTV axles, and general go-fastness. I would love for you to head over to their Facebook page, Bold Racing, or their Instagram page, Bold.Racing, and just show them some love. Let them know that you support their race program and you want to see them continue to promote the amazing elements of motorsports. Safety is our overriding priority. I hear it all the time, but I have to ask myself, is it though? Is that the first thing we think of? Is that the first thing you think of? Over the past couple of years, we've seen the performance of production UTVs increase, I don't know, somewhere around 350%. That means these machines give us a lot more opportunity to have fun and win races, but it also unfortunately gives us new opportunities to crash. And that's why we have partnered with Crash Addict Industries. The owner, Travis Pointer, became very accustomed to crashing early in his career. He saw it as inevitable, and he set out to make the process safer. With a passion for racing, welding, and engineering, Crash Attic Industries now produces full cage and other protection systems intentionally designed to protect you during an accident on the track. They also offer a line of human protection products through their vendors. Do this for me at this point. If you're racing with a stock cage right now, please go check out Crash Addict Dot com and see at least just see what they have to offer even if you choose to go with a different company please 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 make safety your overriding priority i am constantly asking the guests of this podcast how they attract and retain sponsors and on almost every single occasion somebody gives an example of a resume a rider or a racer resume is extremely important to your overall sponsorship pitch and proposal. And it's tough to do. I mean, it's not really the easiest thing. Anybody can go through and put together a resume, so don't get me wrong there, but it's really difficult to get something that's like unique and different and stands out. And then also is something that can be put across multiple platforms. Well, that's one of the things that I want to talk to you about next is how topthepodium.com can actually help you build a race or rider resume that can be used on multiple platforms. I'm talking like website, PDF, you know, something you can print off that's interactive, that looks fantastic. It looks absolutely professional. Well, that's because it's made by a professional. This is the type of thing that's going to set you apart from the crowd and that's going to position you for a strong sponsorship proposal. So what I want you to do next is go to topthepodium.com and if you have a question, there's a little chat icon that pops up on the side of the screen when you go to topthepodium.com and you can go ahead and type your question right there. Jeff Vanistall, he is the owner of Top The Podium. He's gonna be able to respond to you directly. So check it out. Hey guys, George Hamill here to talk about Solder Weld's new off-road repair kit. If you're a racer of any type or an off-road enthusiast like myself, you're going to want to take a close look at this product that bonds metal on the spot. Solder Weld has combined some of their most elite products into one small kit that fits perfectly under your seat or strapped to a roll cage and allows you to make some insane fixes anywhere you go. How many of us have been in a race or out on the trail and got a rock chip in a radiator or brake line? We have seen a top tier desert race team at the 2019 min 400 taken out by a simple rock to the radiator if they had an off-road repair kit on board they could have been back up and running in just minutes the kit includes everything you need to work on dirty aluminum stainless steel copper and many other metals solder welds cutting edge technology allows you to make these fixes with extremely low heat and incredibly high tensile strength leaving you a lasting fix every time don't be that guy broke down on the side of the trail Get your off-road repair kit today, and your friends will thank you. 
All right, welcome back. We are now going to talk about the reasons to say no to a sponsorship deal and then how you actually do that. Now, the first and foremost thing that you might run into when you're reading a sponsorship contract or maybe just going over some of their terms that they've offered you, you're probably looking at the whole money side of things. The you know, is it financially beneficial to me? That's okay, right? We don't want you to lead with that. We don't want you to act like that's the number one thing driving you, but it's part of it, right? Let, let's be honest. This is an expensive sport, and you're trying to figure out ways to, you know, financially make it. You know, if you got to buy gear, you got to buy race fuel, you got to buy whatever it is. It costs money to get there. Um, even if you're running Facebook ads, if you're just doing a content creation, you're just running Facebook ads or just running, you know, Google ads, it costs money to do that. And that's, that's why we're honestly in this whole business of, uh, you know, motorsports marketing and sponsorship. It's in the end, to an extent, there's a, and there's an element of making money to it. So there is a potential that when you're looking at a deal, let's say it's, um, uh, you know, a deal where it's you're getting product at cost or, you know, 5% below cost. Um, you know, that's probably attractive initially, but I've definitely had people give me examples of this. Um, and I've, and I've seen it myself where you might look at a deal, let's say it's cost or 5% below cost, and then you can go, you can find that same product by shopping around, right? I actually did an episode where I kind of dug into this, right? I think I called it, um, either get sponsored or get a job, something like that. Um, but essentially what it means is you could read through a deal and you could find that you can get whatever that product is cheaper, just play in the market, you know, looking out there and, um, you might, you might not necessarily benefit financially from going with the sponsorship deal. It, it, it happens. It happens. Um, now this is where it goes back to where I started the yes versus no, if you're looking at a company as a long-term partner, you know, then you're not worried as much about this part. Being it financially beneficial might not be that big of a deal. Um, however, if you look at it and you're like, this isn't really helping me any, and it's just going to be you working um, and not getting the, the long-term value out of it, then, you know, that's where you can choose to say no. You can You can look at it and say, well, I don't think that this is really financially beneficial for me because, you know, Google shopping, right. It, uh, or, or, um, Amazon, I can get it for 10% below what the, the offer is. So that does happen. And it, it is a potential thing because, you know, some retailers might be heavily discounting, um, products. Um, so it's up to you. Uh, obviously this whole thing is up to you. Everything I talk about here, um, I'm not going to tell you what to do or not to do because it's every situation has its own complexities and its own variables to consider, but that's what you're going to need to weigh here. If you're looking at something and financially, you're like, it's not really that beneficial to me. Uh, you could potentially walk away from that deal and say, nope, I'm not going to do it because this isn't really helping me out that much. And and that's okay. I mean, we'll get into how you say no, but that is an option that you have is to say no to something if it's not financially feasible. Um, I've actually, I won't go through any like specific examples here just because usually when people share stories with me, um, you know, they're, they're in confidence, you know, sometimes people want me to share them, but some, most of the time it, it's in confidence. But I mean, there, there are definitely examples where people will take on a deal and they, they're, they're losing money by doing the deal or they're putting in a bunch of time and not really getting the, the benefit out of it. Sometimes sponsors themselves get taken advantage of, you know, not intentionally, but sometimes that, ha- that does happen, but also sometimes riders and racers get taken advantage of. Um, so that's, really what we're trying to look out for here is if it makes sense to do it or not. And I'm just, I'm going to keep reiterating this point because I don't want to be misunderstood that uh, sometimes it doesn't matter. Even if there's no financial benefit up front, you know, if you're trying to partner with a company and create a long-term relationship and they align with your values, whatever, like, don't worry about this one. Don't worry about this bullet point. But you know, if you already have some established uh, sponsors and you come across this deal and you're like, Nope, doesn't make sense financially for me. Not really going to help me out overall. Uh, You got to move on. Um, All right. So that's a potential reason to say no. Uh, I already kind of alluded to this one, but I want to hit on it. If you're reading a sponsorship deal or if you're evaluating an offer from a company and you don't feel right about it, 
um, mostly based on it not being aligned with maybe your personal brand, your personal values, if it just doesn't feel right, that's another really good reason to say no. Um, this is actually, I think, a little bit easier option to look at if you're saying no to something because the the financial one i think it gets a little cloudy it gets a little gray because you're not sure what the future might bring you know you're you're looking at you know lifetime value of a sponsorship you know the the financial benefits up front might not really be a big deal um but i think it's very important that your personal brand lines up with this company's brand and if you have conflicting values, I, it's just it's not going to get better longer term. It's most likely going to get worse longer term. Um, and this is similar if you're you're trying to, you know, promote something that doesn't feel right or doesn't look natural. It's probably not going to benefit the company anyways. So why put them through that? Why put yourself through the discomfort? Um, if it doesn't line up, then you know you you, you got to move past that deal. Now, most of the time, businesses and sponsors are evaluating that anyways before they even make you an offer. But, hey, we got to be honest about this, too. Not all businesses are comfortable with sponsorship. Not everybody um, is going to be making good decisions about sponsorship. They're going to they're gonna pick the wrong people sometimes. And that's okay, too. Um, you just have to be aware that just because they picked you does not necessarily mean that you your values align with their values. They perceive it likely as such, but might not truly be the case. So that's something that you're going to have to decide for yourself is if they do align with your values or not. Um, I've used examples in the past uh, on this show to kind of explain what this might look like, but I'll try to pull out another example right now just to kind of reiterate and clarify what I mean. Okay. So I don't give a lot of alcohol examples on here, but You know, this one just really comes to mind for me. If anybody's ever seen any branding for like the Stella Artois, I don't even know how to say it. I think it's how you say it. It's a a beer, Stella Artois. Somebody's going to have to correct me on the way to say this. Um, It's all about being like super fancy and, you know, getting the exact right pour and, you know, scraping off the the perfect amount of foam. And either way, it's it's like a high-end brand um, image. And then let's compare that to like Bud Light. So Bud Light's all about, you know, let's be popular, let's have fun, let's have a good time. You know, this is affordable, it tastes good, blah, blah, blah. Um, those two messages are are very different. Um, but it's the same type of product. Um, and honestly, you have to pick, like let's say if Stella... Uh, I'm just going to say Stella from now on. You know what I'm talking about. If Stella offers you a sponsorship deal and you're like a backwoods redneck racer or something like that, it's <laughs> for one, they probably wouldn't make that deal. But if you're looking at that, you're like, how am I going to sell this to my friends? How am I going to sell this to the people who are paying attention to me on social media? Like most likely it's not going to seem sincere. You know, you're probably going to fit better with the Bud Light crowd at that point. And that's cool. Um, and that's what you should do. Similarly, you know, if you are, um, get approached by Bud Light and, you know, you're like this super high end, um, you know, Lamborghini racer, I don't know. I'm, I can't think of any good examples <laughs> to really hit this home, but I think you get my point. If you are some super high end racer and you get an offer from Bud Light, it just might not fit your personality or your brand, or your lifestyle. So just say no to that. Like help them out um, if they haven't already recognized it themselves. So that's kind of my example. I feel like it was a horrible example, but either way, uh, you can probably think of other ones in your head. Just just remember, if it doesn't feel right for your personal branding, you can say no, and that's okay. The next one is. If you don't need a product and someone offers you a product sponsorship, like you gotta, you gotta seriously consider: is this gonna add value for me, or am, do I just want to get some free stuff, you know, or some discounted stuff? Because this, I, I don't know how often this this happens. I feel like I get less people talking about it, but I feel like I can see things where I'm like, you don't need that, or you don't. Need, I don't even know if you'd like that. 
Um, but yeah, if you get an offer for a sponsorship deal for something you absolutely don't need, and let's say you have to install it and it takes time to install it, or maybe you do still have to pay some money to get it. Uh, is that really something you want to do? Like, I don't know. There's just, there's things that you don't need. And you can look at that and say, unless I'm trying to boost like my sponsor cred by, you know, having this sponsorship company, you know, listed in my list of sponsors or having this, this product, like something that I can practice with or learn with. I don't know. There's just not many, many reasons why you would want to accept a deal for something you don't really need or you're not really going to actively use. Um, you know, you take a couple pictures of it on social media and then you throw it in a box and shove it under your table somewhere. Like, I don't know if that's what you really want. Um, cause then you might have to, might end up taking a picture of it later, sitting there collecting dust or, uh, <laughs> you know, or throwing in the garbage, you know, an accident. It's like in the background of a picture. So either way, uh, I think this one's pretty obvious, but I do think that it happens where people will accept product, um, and go through this whole sponsorship rigmarole and they don't even need it or want it. Uh, they just do it. Uh, and then I, I really, the only reason why I think you might want to accept something like that is to get some practice. Um, you know, it preparing for the stuff that you really do need, or if you don't have any sponsors yet and someone makes an offer to you, you're like, yeah, I don't need that, but whatever, it's good practice. Uh, then that's cool. Then maybe you do want to say yes, but for the most part, that one could be, um, an easier option to say no to. Uh, so I, I hit on this too, but I, I really want to dive deeper into this. If you don't like the product, odds are you should say no. Now, a lot of times this means it doesn't align well to your brand, your standards. Um, but if you, let's say you're a Dodge truck person. Let's say you just love Dodge trucks, uh, which I guess are called Ram. So you can probably tell that I'm not necessarily a Dodge person myself. But, you know, if you're a Ram truck person, you absolutely love them. You know, your your parents owned them. You know, you got friends that work there. And like, that's that's where your head's at. Um, and someone offers you a Ford truck sponsorship, uh, but you absolutely hate Fords. Like maybe you're just, uh, I don't know. You, you just don't like them. Then don't go with it. You know, if you just don't, if you don't like it, don't go with it. Now you're probably thinking like, well, if somebody offers me a free truck, like I'm on it. I don't care what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe that's another bad example. But the, the point here is if you don't like something, you're not going to want to promote it. You're not going to be genuine in promoting it. Um, maybe it's okay to say no. Uh, I'll put it on a, a more simpler scale. Um, if someone offers you a brand of tires uh, and you've already been running a brand that you really like um, and you don't have, I don't know, maybe you don't like the way they look. Maybe you don't like the way it makes your machine look. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have to move forward with that. And just to extend to this point and kind of put a different lens on it, uh, if you don't have confidence in the product or you're worried that it could not perform as well as some of the other things that you already have that you're maybe you're paying full price for, you know, you got to weigh that against your performance um, and what that means to you. So, you know, just to extend this tire example, if you are doing really well in a racing series with a tire that you've been running for a long time um, and then someone offers you a free set to change. And you are like, I don't know. I've heard bad things about these tires. I'm, I'm worried about them affecting my overall race performance. Like, you got to now weigh this sponsorship deal versus your ability to compete at the level that you're competing at. Um, that's another example or another option where you might say, no, this just isn't for me. I'm sorry. Um, I actually encourage that. If, if you don't feel like a product is going to meet your standards or your expectations, you know, maybe say no. Or at least at that point, you enter into a negotiation and say, look, I'm going to do this on a trial basis or I'm going to do it behind the scenes and, you know, not necessarily tell everybody that I'm running this. Maybe I'll use this tire in practice and see if I like it. And if it holds up and if it's performing the way that I want it to, then we can talk about a deal. But for right now, I don't feel comfortable moving forward. Um, and that's okay. Okay, the the last thing I want to hit on here for reasons to say no 
is if you have a competing sponsor. Now, I've definitely talked about this in a show before, and it is sometimes hard to know if you have a competing sponsor because they might make a bunch of products in one of your sponsors and another sponsor makes a bunch of products, and then somewhere in that portfolio, there's a couple of things that conflict, and that's okay. Um, But the sooner you recognize that, the sooner you call it out, the the sooner you can avoid awkward um, relationships in business. So if you do get an offer for a sponsorship and you realize that um, one of your other sponsors' products competes directly with it, then uh, it's pretty straightforward at that point. I, I, I don't think it's more of an option to say no. I think it's an obligation to say no. And now you could potentially go to your current sponsor and say, hey, look, I'm not going to be working with you anymore because this other competing sponsor came on board and I'm going to, I'm going to go with them. I mean, that's, that's up to you. Um, I would say if it does come up though, you gotta, you gotta bring it up to the forefront and let people know that you had a, even if you're just approached, even if someone just approaches you, it's pretty good for you to reach out to your current sponsor that has a competing product and say, Hey, someone reached out to me. You know, it was unsolicited. They just randomly got a hold of me. Um, you know, I said no, or, you can also tell them, I guess, you know, I am considering it. Maybe if you'd want to talk, um, we can we can see what other options we have. It's up to you how you want to handle that, but it's um, frowned upon for the most part to have competing sponsors. Um, under very few circumstances does that really work out. Um, one of which I can I can tell you works out well with um, dirt tracks and snow tracks. Um, you know, they have like the major, say, snowmobile brands. Um, will sponsor that show. So say Yamaha and Polaris might both sponsor the show, um, but they are very upfront in their content that says, hey, like we're sponsored by all these people, but we're here to tell you honest evaluations of the product. So they might actually say something bad about one of their sponsors, or they might say that one sponsor product is better than another one. Um, But that's okay. So if you're going to have a competing sponsor, you need to make it very, very clear to your audience and to the sponsors, how you're going to handle that. Um, Cause it can get super awkward, super quickly. If you're promoting uh, different brands that have competing products, that's pretty obvious. So another reason to say no is a competing sponsor. So I really hit on like five different bullets about reasons why you might say no to a sponsor. And I kind of gave a few hints in there about how you might say no, but that's kind of my next point I want to transition to here is, you know, a few tactics that you might use to gracefully turn down a sponsorship proposal. So first and foremost, it's got to be respectful and transparent. Has to be. If you're going to be rude saying no to a sponsorship deal, even if you're offended, I mean, honestly, sometimes people might pitch something to you and you are like super offended by it. Um, Do not be rude and kind. Like you need to show a high level of respect, just like if you were trying to get this person to come on board as a sponsor. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I think it's just the right thing to do. It's what human decency would dictate. Um, So putting the whole ethics and morals and stuff aside, you know, we can kind of dig into this and look at how this might impact you long term. So if you say no rudely to a company, um, they might talk to other companies. Um, the person you're talking to might go work for another company. Um, they might tarnish your name on social media. There, there's a lot of things that can happen um, with these things, especially if you say no in writing and someone can snap uh, do a screenshot of it and post it up somewhere. Like you got to be respectful. You got to protect your brand, um, and be as clear, concise, and positive as possible and say no. Now, just to expound on the, the transparency piece, tell them why you said no. Hey, look, I had a competing sponsor, you know, and I evaluated it and I, it just didn't make sense. Or, you know, I've been using this other product for a long time and I feel that I couldn't genuinely promote your product um, and give you the return that you deserve. So as a result, I don't think this is the best fit going forward. You know, you could say, hey, I looked at some of your marketing campaigns and who you target and I know 
the people that I follow. And I'm not sure that my audience is going to benefit from, you know, seeing your product or I'm not sure that you are going to benefit from my audience seeing your product. You know, it might not be a long-term fit. There might not be a strategic fit there. Um, going into the not aligning my brand or personal values, you know, you could say based off of what your marketing campaign is and your audience, like it, it doesn't necessarily align with the way that I view the world and there's nothing wrong with that, but I just don't feel that it, it fits. It doesn't seem right to me. It doesn't feel right to me. Um, and I want you to get the best value for your sponsorship dollars. I don't think I'm going to be able to bring that. Um, so I think all those are pretty easy to kind of walk through and, and talk through. Now, the not financially beneficial one, though, could be a little bit more of an awkward conversation. So you might just say, hey, right now, I don't feel like it's the best thing for my program. Um, you know, but thank you. Maybe we can talk again in the future. I mean, that that's that's an option. Um, you can say not right now. Um, if it doesn't seem financially beneficial, that's probably the best way to approach that other than saying like, Hey, I can get this cheaper somewhere else. Um, if you do go down the path of you want to tell them like, Hey, I, I can get this cheaper somewhere else, um, without going through the whole sponsorship deal. I think that's okay. If you really craft that message, um, and turn it into more of like a negotiation, I guess. Um, I'd say otherwise you say not right now. And then you go buy that product somewhere else cheaper and you let them know, hey, I'm still running your product, but we're just not an official sponsorship. And then maybe down the road they'll see, okay, well, they're still committed to the product. They're still using it. Um, they just didn't accept their sponsorship deal originally. So that could be a good way of doing it. But honestly, that's the most awkward one. Um, and I'm not – I guess I have the least amount of confidence in how you should approach that situation um, you know, when, it, if it does come up, feel free to reach out to friends, uh, or other people who have experience with this stuff and get their opinions on it. You can use the sponsored rider club, uh, Facebook group, um, reach out in there and, you know, you can ask some questions to see if it makes sense. Um, so either way, that's probably the hardest one. And the last real point I want to touch on here, and I, I really shouldn't have to say this. I almost feel bad saying it, but <laughs> I got, I got to. I got to do this because I've seen some really sketchy stuff get put out there, especially with social media. Okay. Don't say no publicly. Um, this is very much expected if you're treating company with respect and transparency, but like, don't say it publicly. Don't put down the company. Um, if you do p put up a post and say like, maybe you're severing a relationship with a sponsor, um, that's different, but if someone initially offers you something and you're saying no publicly, it can get really weird really quickly. Um, especially if you use any negative language in there, um, it just gets, it can get so weird. Um, you don't want to put a company down, even if you felt like their proposal was a little bit disrespectful. Again, you need to treat that company with respect and transparency. Um, don't do it publicly. Now, I did mention a minute ago, if you're severing a relationship with a sponsor, so say they extend a deal to you and you're like, yeah, I don't, I still don't think this is right. A lot of times it still does make sense to publicly announce that. So, you know, motorsports athletes um, do this a lot, like especially in, in Supercross. Let's say they have a title sponsor and they're going from one title sponsor to another. Um, well, let's say they're a factory rider um, in Supercross and they're going from Team Honda to Team Yamaha, something like that. You know, you're going to want to announce that publicly because you're going to want people to understand why you're on a different bike. And that's, that's cool. Do it with respect. And that, that's good to go. Say, uh, I was great working with Honda. Uh, they were phenomenal. Um, uh, I am excited to bring on a new partner though. And Yamaha, like I wish Honda the best. You can do things like that. I think that's fine. Um, but if someone offers you a deal behind the scenes, um, I, I think making it public doesn't really make sense at that point. Uh, if you're saying no, uh, but I tell you what though, it is super exciting if you are working on a deal behind the scenes and then you make it public by saying yes, right? That's a lot of fun. So definitely do that. Okay. Well, I appreciate you sticking with me through this episode, um, getting through all this information. Um, if you ever have questions, you can always reach out to me, Josh at sponsored rider club podcast, um, or hit me up on direct message on the social media sites. 
All right, well, at this point, I'm going to leave you with this. Have fun and ride safe. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Four Wheel Parts. I want you to make sure that you are subscribed to this show, whether it's on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss upcoming guests and upcoming episodes. And then follow us on social media. We're on all of the platforms. You can find out the most content, though, on our Facebook page. That's where we do our live videos. To get some insider access to upcoming guests, you can also check out the Sponsored Rider Club on Facebook. It is a support network where you can ask questions about best practices and get feedback from our audience. A special thanks goes out to our sponsors, Four Wheel Parts, Amsoil, Solderweld, Bold Racing, TopThePodium.com, and Crash Addict Industries. And I also want to shout out some of our other partners, MBRP, HMK USA, Sudboy Traction, and High Octane Coffee. I look forward to serving you again next week. Until then, have fun and ride safe.